Hey guys, welcome to your first session of Sectors of the Indian Economy and I'm Ankana, your Master Teacher for Social Sciences at Vidatu, hoping all of you are doing absolutely amazing. Let's quickly get started and we'll start by discussing the answer to our previous session's question which was C. Ramagunda. And let's see who has answered the fastest. T-series films, Sai Ghatke and Jocelyn have answered the questions fastest and absolutely correct. Congrats you people, you are here on the leaderboard. People, all of you, the rest of you who have not made it to the leaderboard, guys, let me quickly tell you that you need to put your answers not just in the live chat but also in the comment section because that is where we pick your name from and make sure that you are doing it immediately after the session so that you are doing it fastest and you can make it up to the leaderboard because I would love to have all of your name over here. Of course, that cannot happen at once but just keep trying. One day, it will definitely happen. Now, what are we going to do today? So guys, we're going to discuss the different sectors in terms of economic activities. We're going to compare these sectors and then have a look at these sectors in the setup of Indian context. Yeah. So let's get started with sectors of economic activities. Now, we are saying that these are sectors, which means there are certain divisions. Now, what are these sectors and these divisions have been made on the basis of what? So let's quickly understand that what do we mean by economic sector and how are they divided? So guys, basically what has happened is that we have divided the entire nation in terms of the kind of work that people are doing, depending upon the nature of the work that they do. Okay, Which economic area are they working in and what kind of work are they doing determines which, uh, you know, different, different sectors. And that is what we mean by economic sector and the division in the sector, depending upon the kind of the work done by the people. Now, three sectors have been created on the basis of, you know, the classification of economic activities, primary, secondary and tertiary. So, we have understood what these three sectors are and what is, I mean, like how has this division happened? Now, let's understand what these sectors individually are and how many people are employed there and how does it look like and how they contribute to the Indian economy. Okay, so we'll start with the primary sector, guys. Now, primary sector, as the name suggests, what do you mean by primary? Primary means prime, first, original, right? Something which is basic, fundamental, essential. Now, what kind of activity would be very prime, very, initial, you know, essential or basic in nature? Anything that is related to nature, right? Uh, that's what we mean by primary. I mean, like that, that's the natural explanation to it. And you're absolutely right. Activities which actually involve the uses of natural resources are known as primary activities and these are the activities which form the primary sector. Okay, so anything that is related or associated to nature and is actually produced, the goods in this sector is produced by natural, uh, with the use of natural resources, that is known as primary sector. Now, what do you think, I mean, like in what activity do we use the natural resources? The very first thing that pops up in my head is agriculture, right? And I think that happens with you also. Of course, where else does this happen? It does happen in agriculture and activities related to it. So basically, we get the raw materials through primary sector. Now, guys, when I say about primary sector, as I told you, agriculture is the only thing that pops up in our head. But agriculture is not the only activity that comprises the primary sector. So as I told you in the beginning itself that anything that gives us the raw material is known as a primary activity and falls in the primary sector. Now there are multiple activities which is related to nature which is done by using the natural resources and which provides us with raw materials like forestry, fishing, mineral extraction, mining, all of these comprises the primary activities and forms the primary sector of economic uh, you know, division. Then we have our secondary sector. So primary was the first, the basic, the fundamental. So what do you mean by secondary? This is the stage, this is the sector which comes after primary, which means whatever raw materials we have got over here is now, pro uh, now processed in the secondary stage, in the secondary sector. And something further is created out of it. Some more production is done ahead and some goods are manufactured using these raw materials, the natural products that we got from the uh, primary sector. Yeah, so that is basically meant by secondary sector. Okay, now uh, this can happen anywhere. Okay, it, it's not definite that it has to happen in a factory. It can happen in your shops, it can happen in your home, it can happen in factories and you might be thinking, ma'am, how can it happen in shops and home and all of these small places? 
So, but yeah, people who have small cottage industries or small scale industries, where do they work? They usually work at their home, right? They're, they're creating something. For example, if wheat is changed into flour, the earlier there used to be flour mills where the machine would just be set up in the house of the shopkeeper. And the same thing happens with the seed, uh, you know, uh, extraction of seeds, uh, oils from the seeds. A lot of people set the machine right in their home. So over here, the natural goods are converted into another form, into secondary goods in the second stage, in the secondary sector, in houses. So it basically depends upon what kind of production and in what amount the production is happening. If it is a large production, happens in bigger factories. If it is a small production, can happen in homes, shops, wherever. And some examples of this I already gave you. Conversion of wheat into flour. Conversion of sugar cane into sugar. Conversion of earth, the soil, into bricks. These are few activities which comprises the secondary sector. Then we have our third sector which has now become very very crucial. Now what is third sector Bacha? Third sector does not involve any production. It majorly involves a huge support system for the primary and the secondary sector. They basically support, they basically provide services to the primary and the secondary sector and that is why they are also known as service sector. And that is why they exist moreover to help them, to support them and them by them we mean the primary and the secondary sector and no production takes place in this so what could happen like what are the services where no production takes place and which kind of helps the primary and the secondary sector it could be communication storage transportation banking uh, you know all of these things are a part of tertiary sector where services are being provided so with that we have basically understood what the three sectors of economies are like economic activities are and what are they in depth now let's see how are these economic sectors interdependent because bacha in order to run the country in order to run the economy of the country all these sectors work simultaneously together and also they are pretty interrelated and interdependent now let's understand with one example suppose agriculture requires pesticides and insecticides agriculture primary sector insecticides and pesticides are manufactured goods which means production has happened using raw materials and which sector does that secondary sector does that so agriculture requires pesticides and insecticides so which sector will it depend on for the insecticides and pesticides on the manufacturing sector which is the secondary sector Second is geo cell phones needs to be transported in Europe. We just read transportation is a type of service. So geo, whatever it is, it needs transportation. So which sector would it be? That is your job to identify. So I'm going to leave this question as your homework. Find the answers, find the answers to these questions. Yeah. Second, third, fourth and fifth is supposed to be done by you. Read the needs and identify which sector will fulfill, fulfill those needs. Yeah, we have done the first one for you for your understanding. Okay, guys, now we are going to do a comparison between the three sectors. How do they work and how are they different or similar? But what are going to be the parameters of this comparison? So we are basically, go basically going to look at how much goods, the quantity of the production of the goods and the services in the different, different sectors and also how many people are working in there and what are their uh, contributions to the economic sector? You know, how do they contribute to the economy? So guys, as I told you that there are three sectors, now it's not like any particular sector has more people working for it. All the sectors have good amount of people working for them and all the peoples, uh, I mean like all the sectors are also a very huge uh, place for employment for number of people in each sector. Now, as I told you that people are employed in all the sectors. But uh, when, uh, not, no, no, that's, that's in terms of employment. Now, if we talk about production, okay, uh, the kind of production that is done by each sector, we do not count the quantity, which means we do not count the number of the goods and services that is produced by each sector. Instead, if we want to actually determine how much production is done by each sector, what we do is we count the, we take in account the value of the goods and services that has been produced by each sector. Now, you might be thinking well, why do we take the values it doesn't make sense why don't we simply count the numbers of the goods and services produced so much it's a simple math okay i'll just explain you in a very basic uh, with a very basic example suppose i've produced 10 number of goods okay and uh, the total value of that good okay or each good costed somewhere around 100 rupees so i produced 10 which means i have done a production of somewhere 1000 rupees but then at the same time, another sector has also produced 10 things. But each 
product costs around 1000 rupees which means the total production done by them is of 10000 now what has happened although both have produced 10 things but the value is very very different and actually there's a difference of 10 times in the production in the value in the economic value that they are contributing and that is why we do not count the quantity but we count the value that they have and that is how economy works you count the economic value of the goods and services that is produced not just the number also, Bacha, when you are determining the value, you do not take the value of those goods at every stage, like primary stage, second stage, and then the final stage. No, we only count the value. We only take the value of the product. We only account for the value, which is final. The final product's value is taken into account. Now, what do I mean by this and why do we do that? Let's see with an example. If I talk about the biscuit, okay, in this process, we had wheat, wheat got converted into flour, which then got added with, let's say, some uh, baking powder, some sugar, and all of that, including made the biscuits, which was the final good. Now, I am saying that we will not count each and every stage because we will only count the value of the biscuit. Why is that? Because biscuit is the final product. When I am taking that final product, I am only going to, uh, the, the production charges of all the other things, you know, wheat, flour, all of that has actually been accounted in the final price of the final product. And that is why we are not going to count the price of the wheat also, the flour also, because that would be repetition of the counting of those products. That is why we only take the value of the final product, which would be the biscuit over here. Okay. Now, uh, why are we even doing this counting? You might be thinking, ma'am, why are we even counting the production? What does it going to uh, what is it going to help us in? So, much of this is going to help us in determining that what is the total production done by us as a nation altogether, which further helps us in determining the GDP. Now, you might be thinking, ma'am, you're throwing a new word on us. What do you mean by GDP? Because I struggle honestly. I, as a student, struggle real bad to understand GDP. But your GDP, I'm going to try and break down in a very simple word for you, uh, simple terms for you. GDP GDP is gross domestic production, which means total domestic production that has happened, total production that has happened in the country. Now, what is the time span that we take? Is it one month? Is it two months, six months? No, we take one financial year and financial year runs from March to March. Okay, It's not from Jan to Jan. So from March to March of one year to another year, another year, in this financial year, the total number of production, you know, the total value of the final goods and services that is produced by a country, when taken together and measured is known as the gross domestic production. There's also one more term, which is net domestic production. That is another term. I will not confuse you by saying that. Okay. But the gross domestic production is much when the final goods are taken and all the final goods that have been produced and the services, we take their final value and we see what total number of values in all the sectors in one financial year in a country has been produced that determines the GDP of that nation. Okay. Now let's talk about the changes that has happened in these sectors. But as I told you, we have understood what these sectors are, how they individually work, how are goods produced, what kind of goods are produced and everything and how they are also interdependent. Now we are going to understand that how their journey has been, how the different sectors have looked in context of time, like how they look right now. Primary sector, secondary sector and tertiary sector, they were not like that, let's say 10 or 20 years back. So we're going to understand the changes that has happened in the sectors. So let's begin with primary sector. Guys, as you know, a lot of advancement, a lot of development has happened in the society, which has helped and promoted a lot of development and advancement in different, different fields also. That includes the primary sector as well. Now, earlier when people were doing agriculture or mining, let's say agriculture in particular, they were pretty dependent only on the natural factors for everything, for fertility of land, for rainfall, for temperature, everything was completely dependent on the nature. If the nature betrays us, goes down the harvest. But now it's not like that. Now with the advancement of technology, all of this has changed. The farming methods have changed. If water is not there, we take up the different irrigation processes. If, fertile, if the land is not in a fertile enough, you, we use fertilizers, we use manures, we use a lot of things which now the technology and advancement and you know development has given us. As a result of this, what happened? As a result of this, people who were in law, in, involved in this sector 
got more employment okay and the sector became more prosperous because more and more production started happening uh, before 1960s before the green revolution the production did, did not used to be enough but after green revolution production started happening more which made the farmers more prosperous now they had more technology so they needed more people to work on the fields because more production was also happening which increased the employment and of course that also in uh, totality increased the food production at the same time guys with the changing methods of farming with the changing methods uh, and advancement in the technology increase in the number of traders craft persons etc has also happened and that has also led an increment of buying and selling of the activities of the products and everything why because production is more more selling more buying is happening because you need to do more production so you will buy more materials to do the production once you have more produce you sell more produce and all of this is like a cycle which is interdependent and goes on together then if we look about the historical changes in the secondary sector that is pretty evident as industrialization started happening but your growth of population was also happening now both of these factors led to increased demand of products people had more demands than the amount of supply that was there earlier as a result of this what happened more and more production was supposed to happen in order to ensure more production what was being set up factories was being set up more and more factories were being set up anyways anyways it was the era and age of industrialization so more and more factories started being set up and when uh, and anyways technology was also enhancing and technology was also supporting the establishments of the factories so with all of this what happened new manufacturing methods got introduced which further led to the setup of more and more factories in number at the same time with industrialization and growing population the demand of products was also increasing which further led to more production which further led to increment in number of establishment of factories now when all of this was happening naturally this sector was boosting right it was growing once a sector starts growing they pay their employers employees better so the 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 kind of money that the people who were working who were here the wages that they were getting were better than what they were getting in agricultural sector as a result of this a lot of farmers started moving from agriculture sector to working in factories and became workers in the factory in the secondary sector now we talk about the third and the most crucial sector the tertiary sector in the present moment as i told you the tertiary sector mostly provides services to the first uh, two sectors primary and secondary and that is why it is also known as service sector now but the sector which has grown the most and the fastest is the tertiary sector now why did that happen see of course with the uh, development in technology it really promoted the service sector but at the same time we just read that the primary and the secondary sectors were also growing right they were also developing now what the service sector does it provides services to those two sectors majorly now with that with the growth in these two sectors the sector naturally developed because it was providing the growing primary and it was providing services to the growing primary and secondary sector so their growth determined the growth of the service sector as well now as the service increased as the sector increased as it grew it had more and more people working for it and it, uh, it uh, you know gave it uh, gave an opportunity for more and more, more people to be employed and it gave most people uh, most of the working people got employed in this sector now guys one simple thing that you need to understand is that in any developed country the most number of people is actually involved in the service sector right why because in developing countries more number of people are involved in the primary and the secondary sector because they are working more towards agriculture over production over manufacturing but once the city was sorry once the nation is well developed they will have more people providing services and less number of people in agricultural or primary and secondary sector yeah now as the people started uh, being appointed more and more in service sector they started being more employed they started earning better now but whenever you earn better you start having your spending habits according to that which increases also your purchasing power which we will understand in a quick uh, minute let's first understand uh, what are we going to do next so now we are going to discuss all these three sectors in our indian context how does it look like in india now the rising importance of tertiary sector is majorly what we want to discuss now why did the service uh, sector rise 
guys as the population was increasing the demands increased we also saw in the uh, uh, in the era of industrialization with the growth of population that the demands were increasing at the same time people had started earning better so their habits of spending was also changing now because they had more purchasing power see if you earn only 50 rupees you will try and spend only i mean like accordingly right you will try and buy things which are more economical but all of a sudden if you start earning 500 rupees things that you were buying for uh, i mean like earlier will naturally change you will buy more stuff and you will buy more expensive stuff why because your purchasing power the power to do purchases the power to spend has now increased and all of this further led to the uh, increment in basic services because population is increase increasing so they will demand more and more schools hospitals transportation all of these things houses will naturally increase with increment in banks insurance companies etc so all of the population that was increasing was demanding more and more services which was leading to increase in the basic services which further led to the promotion of the tertiary sector then of course we already said that when the primary and the secondary sector is developing it will naturally lead to the development of the service sector as well at the same time the rise of economic level the people the amount of money that people were earning that increased that increased the purchasing power of the people that increased their spending habits and their demands now changed from basic services to extra services like eating out buying uh, fancy stuff shopping traveling etc right because income determines what kind of expenditure do you do also communication and technology have now become an integral part of our society and our lives without technology and without communication we cannot imagine our lives can you imagine your life without phone without phone services without instagram without facebook without all these social media platforms absolutely not so with the growing uh, you know with the kind of changing lifestyle which involved more and more communication and technology now that further led to the increment of the service sector because that increased the demand in these terms also in this sector so with this we have done today's we are done with today's session one last thing that i want to talk to you about is the state of primary sector so guys we have basically discussed what the three sectors are uh, and what are these divisions done on the basis of we have also understood that uh, what i mean like what leads to the interdependence on these sectors and how the historical how the history has been and how the changes have happened and how the all of this is interrelated but with all said and done there is one thing that really concerns us at this at this moment that is the state of the primary sector and why is that guys because uh, now as you know most of the population in india india has always been very very integrally associated with agriculture sector most of the people of indian society have always been uh, appointed in the primary sector as i also told you india is still not a developed nation it is a developing nation so naturally the people uh, which are appointed in the primary sector and secondary sector will be more but that's not what concerns us what concerns us right now is that 54% of the population is appointed in the primary sector which is more than half of the population but when you look at the kind of production that they are doing the kind of economic value that they are generating it is very very less compared to the kind of people the number of people who are working in this sector in fact the number of people working in the tertiary sector are way less but the kind of production that they are doing in terms of economic value is way higher than that of the primary sector and that is a concerning thing for us that is a thing that makes us worried that makes the government worried because if you look into the contribution that the primary sector does in the gdp is the least and that the tertiary sector does is the highest despite of having the least number of population working in that sector as i told you more than half of the population works in the primary sector and why did this happen why uh, despite of the sectors growing more all the three sectors primary secondary and tertiary and tertiary being so so valuable in terms of economic uh, i mean like, uh, uh, generating so much of gdp and contributing so much to the economic value why are not more number of people employed over there 
that is because by chart the amount of employment the number of uh, you know jobs in the secondary sector and the ter tertiary sector that were produced were not enough they were not enough for the number of people who were looking for job opportunities as a result of which they settled down they under settled and started working in the primary sector only as a result of which the production is not so high because their potential is not being used up to the mark and this problem is known as underemployment why because people are not working up to their potential they are underemployed though they are working they are not completely unemployed but they are not working up to their potential it seems like they are employed but they are not generating what they can in terms of economic value and that is why we say that these people are underemployed if you actually look at the graph you can see that the services industry and agriculture how is it happening so the services the tertiary sector is producing 56% of the gdp and the agriculture is producing only 18% industrial area the secondary sector is somewhere between 26 but that is what is concerning us the uh, the 54% population of the population is uh, contributing only to the 18% of the gdp whereas the number of population the number of people which is very very less in the tertiary sector are contributing to the 56% of the gdp so we need to think something about this and figure this out yeah and with that we are done with today's session we will be doing it the rest of it in the next session so don't go anywhere we will quickly look at the homework question before that let me quickly remind you people that Vedantu Pro subscription has not gone anywhere it's still here guys wherein all your problems have been solved right whether you want to clarify your doubts where to clarify your doubts who to ask which notes to refer how to have good number of tests and assignments and good practice for your competitive exams what kind of schedule to follow and the choices of languages all of this with a lot of bonuses of all classes being live having access to all the micro sessions and crash courses your in-class live performance reports with a ton of personalized attention wherein all the class teachers and master teachers will resolve your doubts right then and there in the class. So these are your bonuses and what you need to do, you know, you just need to visit the link that is given in the description box and it is also pinned in the comments. Just go to the link anywhere and then you will get three things. You, you basically have to uh, follow multiple steps. After you go on the link, you will have to choose your grade, you will choose to have to choose your board, then check out all the details that's there and just click on the get subscription button and you will get a huge discount with whatever package you choose. All you need to do is use this coupon code AKEPRO, that is my coupon code. But sure, no matter which subscription, what package you're choosing, if you apply this code, you will get super, super discount. In fact, there are two options available for you of one month and three months. The bigger package you take, the bigger discount you get. The package which was earlier available only for uh, which was earlier available for 6999 rupees is now available only for 5599 rupees how awesome is that so just see if you feel you still want to be a part of the Vedanta pro subscription and rock it in your board exams choose this go ahead with it and it's going to solve most of your problems because you're going to get a lot of privileges and i would love to see you guys on the live session on the platform i'll be waiting for you people just in case if you decide not to up to you guys no problem and here comes your homework question a hospital or a healthcare center in a city falls under which sector primary secondary tertiary or none of the above guys at this moment uh, at this stage i would actually like to take a moment to quickly dis uh, tell you that how proud we are because a lot of vedantu students have actually done something which has made us so so proud they have bagged the top ranks in IIT JE exam. They have cracked it marvelously, right? The best results among all the online classes that's happening right now is by Vedantu. In fact, if you see around 253 positions in the top 10,000 All India rank has been taken by the students of Vedantu. There are around 5 people in the top 511 people in the top 1,000 All India rank. These are our superstars and we are celebrating our super scores and their performance. They have made us so, so proud. And we are so glad that they are a part of the Vedantu family. And I'm sure you guys must be feeling proud as well, being associated with the Vedantu family. So guys, this is the performance. 
if you guys want to be here stay tuned be a part of the vedanta family be a part of the vedanta pro subscription and i will see you guys in the next session do not forget to like the video if this video helped you guys make sure that you are subscribed to the channel because we are going to come with the second session of this lesson very very soon if you have not already subscribed to the channel go on the bell icon and hit on it click it and get subscribed so that you get the notification immediately as we come up with the second session do not forget to tell me how did you like the session in the comment section also guys make sure you are putting your doubts in the comment section because that's where we pick up your doubts from to discuss in the doubt and the mentee session yeah and now i'm going to sign off guys take good care of yourself till i see you next have a great day ahead bye bye people